Today we have an update to a story we ran yesterday about Nintendo receiving all Activision Blizzard content, and part of this update actually involves Nintendo getting more than just Activision Blizzard content. In fact, they might be getting content from Bethesda and other ZeniMax studios. Id Software, anyone? Yeah, wow. How do we know all this? Well, we have to dive into what we covered yesterday, uh, what was wrong with what we covered, and then dive into some of the nitty gritty details because today I did read all 100 and what, 52 pages or so of these legal documents. <sighs> Man, it was, it, it was a lot to go through, but I wanted to do it for you guys so we could all be on the same page. So first we need to talk about this. So this was an article that we did yesterday. Uh, you notice that the title looks different. See, it says Nintendo's 10 year deal with Microsoft may cover more Activision games than just Call of Duty. And I thought I was seeing something. So I went back and here's my video yesterday. Nintendo's 10 year deal with Microsoft covers all future Activision Blizzard games. So this was obviously a red flag. Uh, showing that they might have got some stuff wrong. And they have an editor's note here saying the statement included in the legal document does not contain the word all, but does insinuate other Activision games apart from Call of Duty for Nintendo Switch. This is due to the inclusion of the following words to obtain Activision content post-merger, including Call of Duty. Including here means uh, one out of two things. Either it's only Call of Duty that's part of this or that Microsoft has planned more content. So look, at this point, we can't really believe anything they said. And I decided that we needed to dive into it. As you can see here on page, I think this is page 57 of the document. Uh, you'll see this category here where Xbox will bring Call of Duty to Nintendo Switch. And it says Activision's Call of Duty games have not been available on Nintendo devices for over a decade. On the day of the acquisition that was announced, Microsoft called the head of Nintendo North America, Doug Bowser, and Nintendo's lead for partnerships, Steve Singer. During that call, Mr. Bowser said he was thrilled to hear this announcement that he had long wished to have Call of Duty be on Switch. As a result, in February of 2023, Xbox and Nintendo entered into a 10-year agreement to bring future Call of Duty titles to Switch and any successor Nintendo console after the deal closes. And then and, uh, that 10-year term was unprecedented. There's a quote here. Are you aware of any agreement in your industry where someone agrees for 10 years to provide content to a, a platform? And the answer was not before this one. No. And that's coming from Steve Singer from Nintendo. Now it goes on to say the agreement guarantees feature and content parity and commits Xbox to releasing new Call of Duty titles on Nintendo, on Nintendo simultaneous with their launch on other platforms. So they got to launch it day and date. It's got to have the same features and the same content. It cannot be fundamentally different versions of the game. Now, going on down here, uh, there, there's some additional words on here. Uh, Post-transaction, approximately 100 million gamers would be able to play Call of Duty on their existing Nintendo devices for the first time in many years. Uh, and then there's not really much in here. It kind of just goes on into talking about Call of Duty's access everywhere else. So just based on this language here, it really just sounds like the deal was for Call of Duty, right? I mean, that's my general takeaway is that seems to be uh, what this is, but that's not actually the case as we get onto, well, and I don't know any other way to put this other than we're entering onto page 69 here, which, you know, nice. Uh, we have this language here that I find very fascinating right here in this section. Not only is the Nintendo Switch more popular than the Xbox overall, Nintendo has a contractual right, that's right, a right to obtain Activision content post-merger, including Call of Duty. This is the big line right here. This is the one that you need to look at when talking about getting more than Call of Duty on the platform. Now, I think this really just means, it, look, I actually did some digging into the game releases they have, and outside of PC exclusive games, Nintendo's actually gotten quite a lot of Activision Blizzard games. They've gotten Spyro, they've gotten Crash, they've gotten Crash Team Racing. Uh, they even got Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 when they remade those games. 
Yes, Nintendo Switch got those. They got Overwatch and Overwatch 2 and Diablo 3. So in reality, Nintendo's been getting a bunch of these games. Like, this isn't abnormal. This deal isn't, like, let's just put it this way. Nintendo is likely to continue to get these games. The question, of course, is will we get Diablo 4 on new hardware, stuff like that? I don't know about that, but what it is inferring, that line is inferring, there's more than Call of Duty involved with this contract. We just don't know exactly what it is. Call of Duty is the focus because that's what the government's been focusing on, but Nintendo should be getting more than Call of Duty, and they already get more than Call of Duty. In fact, they get other games but Call of Duty, so... Honestly, whether or not we go with the words all Activision Blizzard games or just some Activision Blizzard games, in the end, Nintendo already gets some, and then you throw Call of Duty in. That's literally a majority of everything except the recently released Diablo 4 and, well, PC exclusive games. So, you know, read the language however you like. I totally uh, understand, and I do want to apologize for maybe doing some misreporting yesterday. That's my bad. I should have read into this more. Now you have the exact language, and you can do with that what you will. Now, one thing I wanted to get into, we actually have two more things, is where it talks about in here that Nintendo, uh, well, they're going to be getting more than Activision Blizzard games coming from Microsoft. They're going to get games from ZeniMax, you know, including Bethesda. Let's let's talk about that, shall we? So here we are on the docket here. This is page 42, and it says, uh, The decision to make Starfield Xbox exclusive has been beneficial to consumers because they are able to access the game sooner. So they're basically saying the game would be in development longer if it was also on PlayStation. Anyways, a release date that could not have been met if it had been developed for PlayStation also, which is probably true, and then we got some redacted information. Going forward... Xbox expects that many other future ZeniMax titles will be shipped on PlayStation and Nintendo. Now, you might go, what ZeniMax titles were we getting on Nintendo Switch? Doom 2016, Doom Eternal, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. We were getting those id software games. Now, there hasn't been a new one to come out in a while, so this is... As close as we can get to a confirmation of sorts that we're going to continue to get those games. In fact, it's starting to look like Microsoft is more interested in being a third-party publisher than they are pushing Xbox on its own. Now, one thing I will note is that Xbox has actually posted stuff in this filing. Uh, I don't have it pulled up here for you guys. It's just something I read while going through the documents. And Xbox... <laughs> They admitted they make four times as much money off their their, their, their third-party published games on PlayStation and Nintendo than they actually make on Xbox. So they are heavily pushing this idea that why the hell would we ever pull games when a vast majority of our revenue comes from other platforms where we publish games. So it, it just kind of goes to show that Microsoft is different than Nintendo and Sony. Sony, yeah, they eventually bring their games to PC. Nintendo doesn't bring their games anywhere. And Microsoft is just like, hey, you know what? We actually publish quite a few games on other people's platforms. Yeah, we keep some to ourselves and PC, but yeah, we, we, we do publish more than everyone else does, right? So Microsoft does have an argument here legally uh, and just literally because that's what they do. And I, it's only going to continue to do with the Activision Blizzard King deal. Now, it's important to remember King is really the biggest part of this deal, but that's in a different space. Now, this is something that I found in here and just dug up. I thought it was really interesting to note uh, for anyone that's wondering about Nintendo's next-gen device. Because, yeah, they did talk about Call of Duty coming to Nintendo Switch and their next-gen device. So, like, if the next-gen device comes out next year, the version of Call of Duty that Nintendo gets will be on both platforms. Obviously, more visually impressive, probably 60 FPS on the new platform versus the old platform, but they should have the same content and all that stuff. But here is a really cool thing. Uh, there was a lot of talk in this document, and Nintendo was brought up 126 times. Yes, that many times. And that's just the word Nintendo. Like, Switch was brought up a bunch as well. But here's the thing. A lot was brought up about the FTC misleading uh, Nintendo's role in the market, which I found to be pretty fascinating, but not wholly relevant. Uh, the only thing you need to know is that Microsoft does consider Nintendo Switch part of this current generation, not the last generation. Uh, they consider Switch as the first system of the new generation. So take that for what you will. Microsoft is legally saying that. Uh, Nintendo believes that. Whether you guys believe it or not, I don't know. 
But it says the FTC misleadingly attempts to convey Nintendo's lead for partnerships. Steve Singer thought that certain language in the contract with Activision concerning Nintendo's next generation console redacted. The full context of Mr. Singer's note, which Mr. Singer is a Nintendo employee, all redacted. Okay? All redacted. It's all redacted. What is being redacted here? Information on Nintendo's next system. This is fascinating. And this is properly redacted. This isn't one of those mistakes where someone just put a black sharpie over it and we could print off and make copies and like read the language underneath here um nintendo's next generation console has a name a code name a name i don't know that's what this is this is anybody i don't want to hear it anymore i every time i talk about nintendo switch 2 or pro or whatever we want to call it, their next generation device Everybody tells me Nintendo never said they're working on anything outside of the fact that they actually publicly announced it at an investor's meeting in 2021 that Nintendo accounts to be forward compatible with a next generation device, confirming they're working on a next generation device. Here we have in legal documents. It's redacted, but here we go. Thought that certain language in the contract with Activision's concerning Nintendo's next generation device redacted. This is what the device is. The device name's right here. It's right here, guys. Yes. Nintendo has a next generation device in the works. It's right here. It's redacted. We can't see it, but it's there. Oh, and by the way, Mr. Singer being directly quoted, being directly quoted about the language about Nintendo's next generation device. Redacted, 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 redacted. redacted. Like, it's an unannounced product. Of course, we don't know anything, but we know it exists. We know it's real. There's no denying that at this point that this next generation device is a real thing. So what have we learned today in this video? A few things. Uh, I learned something too. One, no matter how reputable the outlet is, I need to double check their sourcing. Um, it, look, it could have been IGN for all we care. The, at the end of the day, misreporting is a thing I do not like to do. Uh, it still was big news because there still is a massive inference that we're going to get more than just Call of Duty. We've already been getting that on Switch, so it looks like we probably will just continue to get that and then get Call of Duty in addition, which pretty much gives us most Activision Blizzard games. It just means like pipe dreams of getting World of Warcraft or something are probably just that. But, but I did find that we also learned not only direct confirmation from Nintendo's own Steve Singer that a next generation device exists and there's a name, but we, we can't see the name. We learned that they plan to continue to bring ZeniMax games to a future Nintendo platform. And that's that's Doom. That's you know, that's id software stuff, right? We're get, we're getting gonna continue to get Doom. We're gonna continue to get Wolfenstein. <sighs> I'm pretty uh I'm pretty happy with this, if I'm honest. I, I do think that while uh, I don't want to show any sort of like bias one way or another over this merger, and a lot of people are anti-merger. The language being here, and, and remember, these are legal documents set under oath. For those who wonder uh, why this matters, that this is all out in legal documents, if Microsoft reneges on the promises in the legal documents, they can be sued a lot. You can have antitrust lawsuits come up because they literally went against their legally stated word under oath, and they could straight up be sued for perjury. So that's why it's very awesome that all of this happened in a courtroom. So yeah, we're getting Call of Duty. We're getting console uh, piece, feature parody. They can't go back on that for a decade. So hey, we're going to get more games from Activision Blizzard. We're exactly what ones I don't know, but we're going to get some of them. Oh, we're also going to get some games from ZeniMax. Which ones? I don't know. I think I do know. I think it's Wolfenstein and Doom will continue to come to Nintendo. But hey, and Microsoft basically just outing themselves as more of a third party, uh, <laughs> third party company than a first party company, mostly because most of their money doesn't actually come from Xbox itself. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts on all this down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, drop a like and subscribe to the channel because why not? And I'll catch you in the next video.